Professor, what's your favorite part of the market right now as, as we debate the broadening that we've witnessed, whether it's just prudent to stay in the large cap tech area? What do you like? Long, long term, I, I think, you know, we see both small, mid cap and value stocks at very large discounts off their historical average valuations. In the short run, really, I still, even though there's been a bit of a pause, I'm not sure the momentum players are done uh, with the MAG-7 or whatever new configuration we have of them, and they may play that a little bit longer. So it's pretty a question of whether you're a short and intermediate term. Uh, they may go to new highs. We may see NVIDIA break that 1,000. It almost did on one day. Um, but over the long run, historical valuations still on the mid caps, small caps are 13, 14, 15. That, that's proved to be a winner in the long run. Well, mm -hmm. I hear some people trying to make the case for those now, though, where, you know, the, the counter argument if is you're patient, uh, you, you, you need rate cuts. You need rates to come uh, down for those stocks to work. How, how would you assess that? You know, I'm not absolutely sure need rates to go. You know, it, it was only a year ago, Scott, if you remember, everyone said, oh, the rate cuts affect the tech stocks the most because they're long-lived assets. All of a sudden, it's now changed somehow. Oh, no, the rate cuts are necessary for the smaller uh, stocks because the, they need that stimulus. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting how that changed. I, I mean, certainly in the banking area, in the real estate, in the commercial real estate area, um, you know, I was listening to, to your last hour, um, that's, that's a, qua a case where those sectors that are exposed, the rate cuts are very critical. But mm -hmm. for the other sectors, I think it's the strength of the economy uh, really uh, is most, most important. And, 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 and trumps all those other factors. Bryn, you want to take the other side yeah. of that? Because I think you do stand yeah. on the other side. I do. I just think this, this, the small cap is such a narrow window to get right. And especially when you think a small cap value is heavily regional banks. I want to steer clear of that. Small cap growth isn't necessarily profitable. And the big difference between the MAG-7 or just like mega cap or large cap tech is the cost of funding. Those companies are making so much money, their cost of borrowing is still very low. These small caps, which are very reliant on interest rates and borrowing, I just think that's going to put a, ca a cap on that. I don't think the algo traders, which are really important to understand from a flow, are going to be leaning into small caps meaningfully as long as we're having this debate about rate cuts. And if we, if we are going to have higher for longer, I would still step to the side of small caps just because of that growth value gives you two areas, regional banks and nonprofit that I think the markets will step aside from. What, what about, Bryn, the big banks? Because we're going to get the earnings mm -hmm. starting next week, and then we're going to be talking about earnings literally every day for a month. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't own any, right? So I, I look at other metrics, but I think you've seen, you know, Morgan Stanley doing well. If we get M&A, obviously Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. But I still think if you look back the past few years, outside of J.P. Morgan, I mean, the banks really have just not been a participant in this rally. So I would just say I'm going to go down to the Qs or the S&P as an allocation versus adding to the banks at this point. We will leave it there. Bryn Talkington, thanks so much. Professor, I always appreciate the conversation. We will see you soon. You. I am certain of that.